<laughs> You're all in glintoxicated. It's at the controls with myself, Tom Merritt, Brian Brushwood, and your host, Glenn Rubenstein. Welcome, everybody. This is Beta Episode 0.9. It is so great to have Tom Merritt, Brian Brushwood in the same place, and of course, joining us as always, Alex Gumpel behind the board. He is man at the controls of At the Controls. I try to be. Wow, that's so meta. I know. It is. I should explain my random glintoxication comment that <laughs> overruled the beginning of the show. Right before we started, you commented, they're like, you know what I did once? I sat down and spent two hours writing puns of my own name. Yeah. Well, it was because of Jermaine Jackson, and his his son is named <laughs> Jer Majesty. Jermaine Jackson showed up and like, you don't have puns half as good as mine, and then he left. And, and I was I'm just like, like, that's so awesome. <laughs> it was funny. It was freaking hilarious, but you ruined the glintroduction. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just glint on with it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All, all uh, kidding aside, let's uh, start this week off and take a look at the news. This is where our news bumper drop would, would end. News. news. It's got to be eight big sound effects. Beep, beep, beep. Tom, what's our top story? World of Warcraft is now free to play, at least until level 20, which could take you over a week if you really stretch it. Player counts have been dropping since Cataclysm was released. Blizzard also promised to increase the frequency of expansion content. And you know what? We really want Blizzard? Freaking Diablo 3! Elsewhere in the realm of MMOs, Sony Online Entertainment is offering an all-access pass to 10 of its online titles. The individual games must still be purchased separately, but if you're already paying EverQuest or Free Realms and want to check out DC Universe Online, say, you can now do so for only a few bucks more a month instead of buying the additional monthly subscription. Sweet. Uh, Portal 2. You guys played the Portal 2. If you finished it solo and co-op, then you can pick up the Portal gun, back up, and... Valve's summer mashing, ma mashing, mapping initiative. I like mashing. Do you I like help to think with that it word? More, it's a mashing initiative. Let's face it. They may call it Sound a mapping it initiative, but that's exactly what it is. Three winners have been named. You can download all of the winning maps plus hundreds of runners up for free at thinkwithportals.com, though they'll only be available for those playing on the PC, which is okay by this guy. Don't despair, console fans. Downloadable content for all platforms coming later in the summer. Operation Rainfall tried to persuade Nintendo to release the English language version version of RPGs Xenoblade and the Last Story in the United States and after hundreds of videos, forum posts and unassailable gamer logic, Nintendo replied, "Quote, we can confirm that there are no plans to bring these games to the Americas at this time. <laughs> Thanks so much for your passion and for being such great fans." Mission accomplished. Good job winning over those hardcore gamers in the US, Nintendo. But there is one glimmer of hope for casual and hardcore Wii gamers alike, and that is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. This week, game producer Iji Anonuma gave an interview to the Japanese magazine Famitsu and gave some mild spoilers about the game, which is set for release in the fourth quarter of this year. The most interesting tidbit? The game is actually a prequel starting when Link and Zelda were still in school and Zelda isn't even a princess yet. <laughs> Guess who's going Hollywood? It's Call of Duty. Activision has partnered with Microsoft to host the first ever Call of Duty XP 2011 Fan Festival, which the game companies say will include AAA talent and musical performances. Activision is capturing a 12-acre section of LA so that they can fit in the expected 6,000 gamers. No word on deodorant availability. Before you can start on the crassness of this, or I'm sorry, is that crassness or craziness? It Cra is crassness. 100% of proceeds will go to the Call of Duty endowment, which helps soldiers transitioning to civilian life to find work and establish careers. Yep, I just saved you from looking like a douche. Tickets are $150 each. Capcom sure has a way with words. Resident Evil The Mercenaries 3D can only be saved once, meaning you can never replay the game fresh, and more importantly, it becomes useless for resale. Uh, we thought they were being money-grubbing thieves, but according to Capcom, quote, the save mechanic ensures that both original and unlocked game content will be available to all users. Secondhand game sales were not a factor in this development decision. Well, there you go. I'll keep that in mind when I can't trade it in at GameStop. <laughs> Now, just to clarify, though, there's been some confusion about that, but I believe that it's just this high score file that will be locked in that save game. I think you will be able to play it again. You can play it again from that save file. Yeah, but, but I you believe can't you can... play it again over from the start, unless I unless unless I've yeah. There's unless, been confusion about it. You know, I'm I reached confused. out to Capcom this week right. and uh, I heard back nothing. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, 
eventually they'll get back to us. Yes, but it's weird though. Capcom's also had some DRM issues. For instance, with uh, one of the titles that's coming out this week, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition for the PC. Originally, they were going to have this crippling DRM on the PC that wouldn't allow you to really play the game except in almost a glorified demo mode yeah. unless you were playing it online. And uh, due to gamer outcry and, and uh, outrage, they actually removed that feature. So now it's it's less crippled DRM on it. But you know it, what's weird about these DRM issues is they seem to be affecting PC and console just in different ways. DRM, that's a uh, constant return on control issues. Now, I do want to point out which something Which we're about. transitioning into <laughs> now. Hey, it's time for control issues. You got a point, Brian? <laughs> yeah, about control issues, because we're not talking about the stuff we just talked about before. Uh, actually, I did just want to point out that on the, the World of Warcraft free-to-play, it's not really free-to-play. If you look at it, it's really just a rejiggering of their same 30-day uh, trial, except instead of being time-limited, you're level-limited. Level limited, limited. Which yeah. actually makes it shorter. Yeah, exactly. Unless you play Ironically, really slow. Unless, yeah. you're, unless you're an alcoholic like, you like I am. Yeah. Yeah. But the game is free, Could though, you twink at 19 though. Well, and then just never pay? <laughs> Yeah, like, I know people. I'm happy. Uh, I, I know people who do that. Yeah, no, I, I think you're an adult at age 19. And of course, you can, you can never create any other <laughs> characters. Well, I'm well, sorry. Some you're talking about something totally yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. This is confusing. That's to me. Uh, where you get up to a certain levels uh, max, and you don't go over it, so that so that you can play all the content at that level forever. Oh, gotcha, so you, you, gotcha, you gotcha. essentially try to lock down your character so it never earns any more XP. So in other words, it's the Peter Pan syndrome, but on yeah. World of Warcraft. Right. Yeah. Similar, I'll never but get different. Older. <laughs> now, but with, with that, though, they're giving away the game for free, though, now. You don't actually have to buy the retail copy to do the free-to-play. Yeah, and that makes sense. I mean, who actually Which you could do. You could download They the had a free friend trial. code before, and I mean, basically, they're, yeah. they're drug pushers. Also, well, yeah, <laughs> I've always maintained that, that Blizzard should be like, you know, just airdropping World of Warcraft CDs over large areas <laughs> like of the country. Oh my gosh, don't you know, make them into AOL because, part two. Because all idea. you want is to get people sucked into playing the game and paying that fourteen ninety nine a month. That's Yo, where first you're making your money. Yeah. Uh, well, our first control issue was apparently Blizzard. Our second one uh, was Supreme Court striking down the violent video game ban here in California. So the brief on this, uh, there was an attempt to pass a law that said if you were under the age of 18, uh, you would have to have parental consent to purchase certain video games that were deemed phrase it violent. Correctly. Phrase it correctly. It's not, the law didn't say that you had to have parental consent to buy. They mm. said it was illegal. It was illegal it was to, against... for a retailer to sell That's right. to a minor without parental... An oh, M-rated well, game. Yeah. <clears throat> well, And also, keep in mind, they didn't even... Tie I don't, it to, they didn't the, tie it to the, the law ESRB. didn't specify M rated. Or was yeah. violent. It, no, no, it, was it violent. had a vague definition of violence, which was one of the problems the Supreme Court had. Said, look, this vi definition of violence is too wide. Yeah. And what the majority of the court said was, you are limiting speech based on a very vague definition, and and you can't limit that in this case. We're not saying you can't limit what gets sold to kids, mm -hmm. uh, but this is just, you know, this is a, this is a free speech issue, and you're limiting speech without showing a, a, a clear cause for it. Now, a couple of, uh, Justice Clarence Thomas like actually spoke for the first time in 50 cases. Which was a huge deal. I was deal. about to say, he yeah. never gives comments, and in fact, uh, I didn't want to say anything because I was on the PC Gamer podcast when they, when they broke the story and they said it was Clarence Thomas. I didn't want to talk out, but I thought, it probably wasn't clear. It's Thomas. He never talks. Nope. Yeah, but he, he did yeah. on this one. But and he was Spoke on the up. dissenting opinion. He, he actually felt like this. this he he and was uh, one Breyer of the were the two dissenters. Uh, they both wrote their own dissents, but yeah. they wrote them from slightly different perspectives. They essentially agreed, though, that because it's children, you should be able to regulate this. Well, and and I'm not against all kinds of regulation. However, certainly something that's so poorly worded as this is the good bad idea. And and of course, it's it's so cheap. For, it's a way to score cheap political points to uh, to 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 dog on violent video games mm -hmm. because when you say violent video games, everyone thinks of your Manhunt twos or any of these hideous things. They're like, well, that's not for me. But I'm going to say it's so important that these be protected and that these games exist. These games have to exist. There has to be something on the market that's more hideous than any of us want to actually buy. And that's that's yeah, the, that's the that. nature of freedom. But should it be sold to children? I mean, well, this wasn't okay, about whether they're the allowed ESRB to be sold or not. For. That's what the Entertainment Software Ratings Board is for. And that's what I find interesting about this. The ESRB was actually formed in response to lawmaker outcry back in the mid-90s over games like Mortal Kombat and Night Trap. Right. I remember I uh, spoke at a symposium that a California legislature a le legislator had in the mid-90s about this pre-ESRB where they were going on and on about, you know, these are the type of games you would have seen in Nazi Germany, all right. sorts of fear-mongering about what this will do to, you know, the, the effect of violence on children that were playing these games. So 
the publishers came together and formed the ESRB specifically to say we can self-regulate at having our own entity to give uh, conclusive ratings information on these games to help parents make informed decisions about what their children should be playing, which is why I thought the California law, my disagreement with it, was that doesn't this go a step further to have a government regulation oh, way, when, way when so. it's already self-regulated? And I don't think anyone's really had any complaints about the ESRB and the job that they've done rating games. People know that an M-rated game is an M-rated game. That's the whole meaning. Uh, the whole reason that the MPAA was created. Now, the MPAA mm -hmm. is arbitrary and it's unfair and the way they run their business is not the way I'd like to, the business to be run. But for 50 years now, they've kept the government out of the business of saying what movies could and could not and come And the Catholic out. Church. Well, yeah. <laughs> Which was the de facto rating system before the MPAA started doing it. I didn't know that. Everyone Nor looked at the Catholic Church's ratings uh, to, to decide whether their kids should see movies. But there's a Insert lot Insert your own jokes here. Yeah. Uh, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of precedent <laughs> or, for with, effective <laughs> self-regulation, even though it doesn't, it's Counterintuitive, but the MPAA has pulled it off. The Comics uh, Code Authority has pulled it off for comic books, uh, and I think the ESRB is doing it. Uh, and uh, I, for one, th this is this is a a. a one for the good guys. It's one for common sense that they said that this poorly worded government regulation do essentially, you know, who's to say what violent is, you know? Now, but here's here's something, uh, you know, because we seem to all be sort of agreeing here. So let me throw a wrench into the works. <laughs> the Supreme Court said that we're not saying you can't restrict violent video games from being sold to children. What we're saying is your law was written very poorly and in such a way that you were, first of all, restricting it to video games. You were saying you weren't, you know, you can you can sell a DVD that has more violent content to a right. minor, but you can't mm -hmm. sell a video game? That's too broad. That makes no sense. So they're essentially challenging people to go back and rewrite the laws to say, we're going to make it illegal to sell anything that is rated M to minors. If they did that, it might pass the Supreme Court's test here. Oh, the most stores do enforce that law. Or yeah, do, do you force that rate policy. rule? That, that rule. Policy. Yeah, policy. Yeah. yeah, it's not a law, but it's a policy where they don't sell M-rated games to children. What I thought was interesting, though, going a step beyond your interpretation of it, Tom, is that uh, Anton Scalia, in his opinion, actually said that children are introduced to violence. That that's been the way since the days of fairy tales, and then actually cited grim fairy tales, Hansel and Gretel, things like uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, as as uh, children being just accustomed to having violence in their entertainment media that they were, you know, back then being read to or consuming in some form or another, and essentially saying that this is nothing new, kids can handle some violence, which is kind of a weird, I mean, I agree with the decision, but it's kind of weird when you get into the subtext of it. Uh, I don't know, for me though, Scalia, and I said this as someone who doesn't often agree with Anton Scalia, he is one of my favorite Supreme Court justices just because he will have these crazy explanations of things where he is, he that is a guy that agree with him or not he is not afraid of whether or not you take issue with what he has to say he has his own logic that's you want to play a video game that's supreme court justice smackdown <laughs> and you actually just you could play as scalia and body slam clarence thomas it's like <laughs> mortal justice mortal justice <laughs> but the j spelled with a g ready judge <laughs> Uh, our other control issue for today, a streaming bill could affect video games as well. What's this about? So this bill has been around for a while. It's uh, Senate Bill S-978, which essentially states that 10 or more public performances by electronic means of streaming copyrighted content will get you no more than five years imprisonment. Uh, you know, there, there's some weird specifications that they have here. I mean, I'm looking at, they're saying that essentially it's like a 10 strikes in your out policy over the course of a year of streaming copyrighted works. Yeah, they're trying to make the public performance law work for streaming, is what yeah. it sounds like. Well, actually, I think they're trying to make it work against that in the sense well, of, I mean, of fair use. Work, work for the regulation of streaming. Yeah. In other words, saying if you... Uh, stream something online and more than a certain amount of people see it, then that makes it a public performance and we're going to come down on you as if you uh, ha did a public performance of anything without a, a, a license. At what point do we get to the to the point where we can just say enough is enough and this is idiotic and, and dang it, we live in a digital age and I don't physically go over to my friend's house and play video games together, but you know what I do? I actually fire up Justin.tv and get like 20 friends to watch me play Portal 2 with my brother. How can you make Make that a crime. May that is of so 2031. 
Well, <sighs> this Tell isn't me. how it started, though. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but this bill has actually been around for a couple months. It yeah. started specifically to deal with people that were streaming sports, uh, sports pay-per-views, streaming events, and then the MPAA and all sorts of rights organizations backed up in favor of it and lobbied yeah, they for said, it. Look, if we can shut down the soccer game, we can shut down the people folks that are streaming who are putting movies. Up movies. People that are video streaming, game basically the looking game. at the fact that streaming is more of an effect to their business model than perhaps even piracy is, because there's sort of this gray area now that on YouTube. We can go on and find old episodes of TV shows. We can find movies. We can find uh, weird recordings that people are doing off the television on their flip cam or their phone to essentially stream. And it seems like YouTube, now they'll take it down if someone files a digital millennium copyright uh, request and a DMCA takedown notice. However... Unless they do that, it stays up there. Well, no, we're, and we're backing into this, right? We're yeah. talking about movies, we're talking about sports, and everybody out there is probably familiar with that stuff. But this is going to somehow possibly apply to streaming video games because of the way the laws written, like now. what you did with Portal. Yeah, absolutely, and it was a fantastic experience. And if anything, like you have no idea how many tweets I've gotten of people saying uh, watching you and your brother play was about the funniest thing I've ever seen. Portal Two looks amazing. I wasn't going to buy it, but now I'm going to buy it. This in no way serves the copyright owners. But here's here's the other thing, and uh, you, you being probably the sportsiest of the three of us, wasn't there an initiative saying that you couldn't even accurately report what happened during a baseball game? You could not say the factual number of RBIs, the number of home runs, the number of balls and, and strikes and whatnot? Well, I don't know why you would say that I'm the sportsiest of us, <laughs> Brian, but, but yes, there was there there was a uh, an online law about you know about whether the stats were actually the property of the league or not, and whether it was okay for you to stream those out on like Twitter or something. So specifically, uh, I, here's the problem: is we have different. And first of all, uh, I, I think this is a bad law. This is an obviously hilariously bad law when it comes to video games. Uh, it, it is still a bad law when it comes to doing live streams when uh, you're playing stuff in the background, and it's it's. It's unfairly a bad idea when it comes to an organization like Twit, where we're a news organization, we give commentary, we talk about the latest things that are happening, and in the course of doing so, we talk about what people are talking about, which is the latest movie trailers, the latest video game trailers, and all these things. Somehow turning that into a felony, uh, this is the limits of absurdity that I'm willing to take. And it's well, fair, fair, to say fair use is a defense. So you, you could make the argument that even if this law was, was used against us, we could go to court and we could defend ourselves and say we're a news gathering organization and we should follow to this law that you know that that's up for debate what what i find more interesting is this idea of if i'm playing a video game i'm creating what's happening you're creating content i'm you're not in just taking somebody's you know movie and slapping it up online mm. i'm moving a character but around on that now i'm definitely using their intellectual property to yeah. do it i couldn't do it any other way but it's not as straightforward to me as just taking someone's else else's work and copying it it requires me to participate so shouldn't that change that would be, how it's interpreted? That would be the exact logic behind remixes is saying, no, I own this because, yeah, I took, you know, I took, uh, you know, I want you back and mixed it with Wonderwall. And so this is my song because I took these two things and I did it, put my own spin on it. I think there should be mechanical royalties for that kind of stuff. And maybe there should be mechanical royalties for, for video games where because right now, if I want to sing someone else's song, I do not have to get their permission. All I have to do is pay a mechanical royalty. To the it's, Harry Fox it's, organization. It's set down in statue. No, that's actually what it's called. Is that what it, no, that, is? That's, it really? Uh, the was, Harry Fox organization, I believe. I'm thinking of day. ASCAP BMI. Well, that's ASCAP BMI, which collects publishing royalties. But essentially, if you don't make a deal with a specific publisher, I believe it's called the Harry Fox organization. You used to be like 6.98 cents. You can Collects make it a check it for to other them. People? They're, they're oh, basically okay. a collection, uh, like an umbrella agency that handles collections and uh, licenses for songs. But I think that should be, be you should be able to do that for reasons remix where it's like if you're using more than a fair use amount in a remix but you are creating something new yeah. where does where then, does this end i mean does it end when my daughter uh grabs her mickey mouse doll and acts out something on youtube she provides the voice she does the you know she well, and that's where we along. need fair use you're laws. like oh well that's, that's where we that's, need sensible fair use that actually protects consumers and doesn't require them to go to court and defend themselves every time well because that's, yeah that's what my, what my playing problem, with the dolls said, on the video you that's, said let's just settle it use. in court and it's like the very act no of being sued i'm is saying a that's the way it is now yes yeah which is terrible yeah and I think the key with this is that I don't think it's intended 
to stop all of this behavior in a blanket fashion. I think the way it's written, it could be interpreted that way. But really what they're going after here are people that are specifically streaming copyright works that they want to have a leg to stand on enforcement wise. Because right now, unless you're running one of those organizations where you charge money to stream sporting events, you essentially charge cut rates. Right. They shut down a lot of those organizations. What they're trying, I believe, to do is cut down the gray area of people that are just putting stuff on YouTube that the copyright holder, holder might have a disagreement with having it spread. They essentially want to put some fear out there and have a leg to stand on if there's a serial offender to where they can press charges and have it be against the law. I, I don't like where this heads because, first oh, of I don't all, either. Uh, and, and specifically, like you have an organization like uh, Blizzard that is that is actively actively trying to create Starcraft as a spectator sport. They yeah. want this kind of shout casting of, of all the games. Yeah. You have a brand new class of entertainer as these sports announcers for video games. This is shutting that down. And likewise, everybody who's developed all of a sudden becomes well, dangerous. Well, this doesn't shut it down. If Blizzard says in their license you're allowed to do this, this just says if you're not licensed to do it, then they have the right to shut you down. I think so. Blizzard's free to to say, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna give you an exception in the terms yeah. for this for this video game." I, I I don't like the way we're all scared all the time of accidentally singing. I was watching the Venture Brothers the other day. And yeah. There's one moment. Don't when, sing it. When Henchman Twenty Four <laughs> is singing uh, the uh, the the what was it? The Human League. I forget what, what that. Don't 80s you band. want me? Yeah, yeah. But he sings it like obviously, hilariously, unquestionably bad. So much so that you could tell they wrote that line that way so that they couldn't possibly be accused of singing even one one line of the song yeah. with with that tune and it's like this is asinine it's absolutely <laughs> idiotic and it does not serve the interests of anybody no, and I think that it's going to come down to the enforcement. I'm curious if they can actually implement this law and have it stand with uh, any sort of court challenge. I think if this passes, which I think it will, and I think this is the reason people are freaked out. Yeah. I mean, look, when I'm not playing video games and spending time here on the Twit Network, <laughs> I'm an avid follower of polit politics. I, fo I follow politics the way most people follow sports. Right. And with everything that the Congress and the Senate has on their plates right now, right. unfortunately, this is one thing that they seem to that they can agree upon because there's so much backing of entertainment rights organizations. So that much are behind money it. behind that. I mean, don't say backing. There's no public support for this. There's hey, zero in politics, public backing support is for money, this. Brian. This is, no, in I politics, know. money is that them's the votes that matter. There is no public support for this. This does not serve the interests of their constituents. It serves the interests of the people lining their pockets with money. It's corrupt and it's a well, bad idea. It's a step here's in the, the wrong thing direction. you can do if you want to protest this: uh, the Protect IP Act and this anti-streaming bill. Go to, there's a site that's been set up, demandprogress.org. I'm putting uh, the link oh, out good. on you my found Twitter. It. I was looking right for now. it right there. Yes. So please. I just tweeted the link out. Um, I'm at Glenn Rubenstein on Twitter. There's a link there. You can check out ways that you can protest this bill and let your congressperson or your senator know that you think this is a step too far. Because I'm just telling you, my political handicapping of someone who watches C SPAN and uh, all the major cable networks, I think this is going to pass just because it's Washington likes something they can all get behind and agree upon. On. And as we know from look, no matter which side of the aisle you're on, much legislation is passed where the people voting on it haven't even necessarily read all of the legislation. Well, especially in read. the early days <laughs> when we're in the wild west of a new, you know, it's a new turf here on the internet. And of course, it's easy to pass things that sound good on a piece of paper and you're getting, you know, $100,000 donation from these people. So, so sure, why not? Well, I, I think it's reasonable for people not to take other people's video games and stream them for free on the internet. I'm just going to put this out there as one glimmer of hope, perhaps, and this is just a little political speculation. A glenner of hope? <laughs> a glenner of hope, that's good. <laughs> it, which is, now if they don't pass this by a veto-proof majority... I would maybe have some fingers crossed that President Obama, because of his ties no with way. Google and Influence, because so, think about who what the, about President Obama so far has indicated what about to you Vice President that he's Biden, who has said, like I will do everything the industry wants. No, yeah. but, no problem. But think about this: so you're forgetting about Google, and people have said for good or for bad, the influence and the relationship between Google might be all close. This is going to affect Google and YouTube more than anyone else. Yellow card for optimism. <laughs> Goes to Glenn Rubenstein. <laughs> what? What is? And think about the recent talk about YouTube acquiring Hulu. About Google acquiring Hulu. What is YouTube going to do if this law passes? Because YouTube is going to have to be the organization. YouTube that safe harbor. It. They're going to not going to change anything the way they do it. They're going to. They're going to they're gonna say if someone tells us that there's live streaming of this going on, we'll take it down. 
And you have to be a partner with them to do live streaming right now, yeah. anyway. So it, they're, the, they're the on, they they've already been though, fighting the movies and stuff in the online. But live streaming, what they mean by, I mean, whether it's live or not, I mean, yeah. let's just be clear. It's I mean, just going to let's play videos. It's going to go well. in. It's going to go into that same bin that all of those see, videos go into right now, where I see. I think where somebody has to file a takedown notice, and then I, YouTube takes it down. But then there has to be more cooperation, though, because they're essentially talking about making this criminal. It's no longer just yes. sort of a slap on the wrist. We'll take it down. Maybe we'll shut down your YouTube account. This is going to be criminal. Felony. criminal. Yeah, well, felony, felony offense. Jail and time. Brian but you, but again, what did jail. you do? All Brian YouTube has to do is what did you do? All YouTube has to do is the same thing that they've been doing and and report and pass along the data. That's all. Now, now here's here's That's the safe. Thing. They have safe harbor, so it's not really going to affect. What them. I'm hoping is that they're this just could a be, collaborator. They're just following orders, Glenn. This could be, <laughs> and we know that's a valid defense. Uh, th- <laughs> this could be the flashpoint that causes a new debate because I think uh, first of all, it's very obvious in the case of video games where it's like, yes, it is your video game, and maybe you do mechanically deserve some cut of whatever money I make but it's my talent my skills and I'm the one playing and I'm the one presenting and nobody tuned in just to look at your level they tuned in to watch my presentation of it likewise though I want to see that be the beginning where we can all say yes to that and then go a step from that and say because I'm not gonna lie there's a lot of times I go live on my justin.tv account and people send me videos I'm like hey let's watch this viral video let's talk about this let's comment and you know and again I'm not a news organization I'm a guy with the Justin TV account but nobody's tuning in just to watch the videos they're there to watch my my I think there's right now there's no structure for uh, for for taste curation, and I think there should be, and I think this is a, a way to get a wedge in that direction. And if there's a reason to fight this, is that Brian is too pretty for jail. Yeah, <laughs> seriously, it's kind of Plus, a, it's kind I'm of a, a coward. Risk. <laughs> Let's take a break and thank our sponsor. We have no sponsor because we're in beta. Thank you, sponsor, for not sponsoring. Us. You know what I love? We'll about get real sponsor. sponsors. Yeah. Oh, that thing they do. Uh, oh my do gosh. Do you use that sponsor? I do, and uh, you know I've noticed in situation that oftentimes I'll derive benefit when I think there's a problem, We've and all of a sudden bit. sponsor <laughs> saves the day. I, re- I remember this bit. I know, dude. We're gonna do it every time until we get a sponsor. We're whether you get it right, whether you're a novice or an expert, sponsor. Use the offer right code. For you. Sponsor. I'll use offer code. Offer code. Big games of the week. Big games of the week. Not much. That's actually the instances. Big news of the week. I just ripped it yeah. off. Yeah. Wow. But we'll get, our, we'll, Scott? we'll get our own drop. And then I won't have to in, uh, rip off Scott. Call of Duty, Black Ops Annihilation Map Pack. Uh, looking at the calendar. There's some stuff coming out. Like I said before, Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition hit the PC. It hit the consoles last week. So if you love you some Street Fighter. I would never play a Street Fighter game on a computer, on a PC. They're somewhat popular, though. Really? Yeah, online play and pe- people do actually play. But without the stick, yeah. how, how is it the same? Uh, yeah, uh, well, I, well, first of all, I would say the same thing for consoles with the thumbs. It's not the same with the thumbs. The only way that it's a valid uh, console fighter is if you actually have, you know, a simulation of the six-button controller with the joystick. That's the only valid. That's it. Way to play. Yeah, okay. it's Everything quiet. It's a is... quiet week for big games. But we have an iOS game of the week. Yeah, we do. Uh, let me called back Tiny to Tower. <laughs> it's very small. I haven't checked it, it out. A, it is a tower. Tony, uh, one yeah. of our producers, put that in there. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, here we go. We got a calling up right now. Take a look at this. What if tiny digital people could live inside something? Your phone. They would need a place to live and work. Something this is like for a the tiny audio podcast tower people. building, right? Something like it. Yes. Underneath, right underneath the glass. Huh. So this isn't a tower defense game. Uh, no, it actually looks like Sim Tower. Ah, uh, it really lot is. Like Sim tower. It is totally Sim Tower. That, Except that not makes Sim me Tower think of elevator action. EA. Which why isn't there elevator action for the iPhone? That would be fantastic. Why not? Oh yeah, that'd be freaking awesome. <laughs> why isn't there a lot of games for the iPhone? Coming soon to the App Store from Nimblebit. Actually, I think it is in the App Store. Can uh, let me I try believe- this? Let me try this link. We're gonna do. This is why it's in beta. We would have normally clicked all this stuff before, and you could say that, Tom. But just uh, you know, whatever. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, free app. You can get it. Yep. Download it now. Tiny Tower lets you build a tiny tower. Thank you, Tony. I, I actually thank you, Tony, for the tiny tower. I actually, tiny Tower Tony. <laughs> actually, rather <laughs> Tiny Tower Tony. <laughs> That's, You'd rather what? It's just because he's the Asian. Hey! Uh, yeah. oh, oh, red card! Red card! <laughs> red brush card for a stereotyping Tony oh, Wayne. Come on! All right, all right. I, move, I rather like Sim Tower. That's all I was trying to say. Let's move on to what we're playing. What we're playing. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so I've got a bunch. Uh, Tom, why don't you go first? 
<laughs> I'm not playing anything. Uh, you know what? I played a little game called Hosting 16 Podcasts in One Week. <laughs> it's a very challenging game. It's sort of a super immersive yes. MMO. Uh, it involves diverse landscapes all across yeah. the United States. My, my, the game I've been playing is Get United to Fly Me Where I Paid Them To. <laughs> <laughs> How's that working out for you? I won <laughs> uh, by using Air Canada. But yeah, uh, no, I, I, you know, other than the normal like minor stuff that I play on iPhone, iP- iOS, like uh, We Rule and and Vampires Live, and you know those those little pit. You got your regular rotation. Yeah, I have. I haven't been playing anything new this week. What about you, Glenn? I've been playing a whole bunch. I'm going to let Brian go. Oh, first. let's go with yeah, Brian. Yeah, 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 I don't and for, know first of all, I do want to apologize for my early comment. That was completely Glenn sensitive. Uh, the. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I I also being on the road makes it a little. Bit I'm glad you came to that conclusion. <laughs> uh, I I have been on the road myself, which means I've played a crap ton of of Drop Seven, and I don't know why, but for two years I have had the goal of getting over a million points on hardcore mode in Drop Seven, and I got all the way up to like 980 thousand, and it just killed me. I I died. Uh, and so uh, I, I can't wait to get back home. But I also have been playing a little bit of Frozen Synapse and I'm trying to get all the way into that. Have you guys seen Frozen Synapse at all? No. I've seen it. I want to check it out. It, it looks it, pretty cool. Uh, you need to watch some of the tutorials explaining what trumps what when it comes to the tactics side of things. And it's like it's totally binary. There's no randomness to it. It's like uh, one configuration will always defeat the other configuration. It's really more of a game of trying to guess what the other person is going to do in their tactics. It's a it's a neat. It's a neat kind of game. All right. What 16 games have you been playing, Glenn? Okay. This week, Zelda. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the 3DS. Last Ooh, week, we had Joshua Caleb on to discuss I his impressions of it. And I have that. to say, they all seem pretty spot on. If you liked the original game, if you're a huge Zelda fan, it's a lot of fun. Now, here's the thing I'm going to say, though. We talked about last week, is it worth buying a Nintendo 3DS for, even if you're the world's largest Zelda fan? Joshua said, yes, he thought, in his words, the game was totally legit and what? worth buying the 3DS for. Here's but, but the thing. But this is a game that's already out. It's ancient. And it's an here's old the game. thing. Now, but it, the, no, but they've looks, adapted it for 3D. And you would spend it more looks money better. to buy it on the 3DS than you would have to buy it when it originally came out 20 years ago. Yes, you'd be spending $250 right, dollars for a Nintendo 3DS plus like 50 bucks for the game. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I've been playing it and I've also been messing around with the 3DS and seeing what else there is on the 3DS. I'm here to report not very much. <laughs> um, the Marketplace, which I thought was going to be really cool, has, well, first off, you get a free download of Excitebike, the Nintendo Classic, in 3D. Which yeah. I love Excite Bike, but I gotta say in no, 3D uh, it's really ever not. since I was a kid I was like this game is fun and all, but yeah. psh, two dimensions what really? <laughs> I need a third one. I've waited 25 years for this moment. <laughs> I really liked they did an update of Excite Bike for the Wii. Uh, it was a virtual console downloadable only title last year, and that was actually really cool. This though it's the original 8 bit Excite Bike. If you loved that game, I don't know if it's worth buying a Wii for. Uh, aside from that, in the marketplace, a Wii or a 3DS? A 3DS, pardon okay. me, 3DS, but uh, in 3D. Too, too. How arbitrary is that? It's pretty arbitrary. Yeah. So by 3DS Marketplace, <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm going to buy some buy some titles, right? First off, not that many. There's a few dozen there. They're also not cheap. This isn't like the iPhone or Android Marketplace. We're talking 99 cents for right. two bucks for a game. So I bought Tetris for five bucks, which it's Tetris. Yeah, which we're still buying Tetris, really? Yeah. I think Tetris should that should have been a pack in. It just I don't know why if they didn't. If any do that. game should be socialized, it should be freaking Soviet developed Tetris. <laughs> I also bought Bomberman, which we were gonna talk about for the retro this week, but I don't think we're I think we're gonna save that later for our retro game of the week. But I'm gonna talk about Bomberman the three DS a bit. I love me some Bomberman. I think that is one of the best multiplayer titles of all time. So I was stoked to spend five dollars and say now i can go online and now granted this is the ds version of bomberman but you can play ds games on the 3ds okay so it's not taking advantage of the 3d it doesn't take advantage of the 3d at all same with tetris by the way i went online and in world battle i had trouble getting three other people to play against me with the player matchup service do you know not a lot of people are playing it that uh, i remember being 17 years old and reading about bomberman like that was going to be the game that that made it made it worthwhile for me to have bought a turbo Turbo graphics 16 right and everybody talked up how awesome the multiplayer was and i never could i never could have any friends over i couldn't ever get four people to i never had the four player four player bomberman's fantastic i've played eight player bomberman before i won a bomberman tournament once with jeff gersman and ryan 
McDonald from GameSpot. We won a trip to Cancun that we <laughs> didn't wow. go on. Yeah. We what? weren't able, You couldn't be bothered th- to rock Cancun? They punked out of it. They Bomberman. were afraid to go to Mexico. They were afraid there were bombs down there. <laughs> so we ended up forfeiting this trip we won from a Bomberman tournament. What? Wow. But I love that game. Well, we will give it full retro game treatment. And I think when we do the Twit Arcade, our LAN party that's going to be happening oh, after yeah. show, we're going to have to get some Bomberman that's competition. That's a great idea. Oh, yes. For sure. I love that game. So on the 3DS, I'm just disappointed that there wasn't anyone really to play it with. Yeah. Now you are into the Uncharted 3 beta, too. I'm in the Uncharted 3 beta, as are all PlayStation Plus subscribers so if you have the playstation welcome back package as remember that whole fiasco yeah, that right. sony had a few months ago they're not talking about that anymore huh. funny funny, funny, funny that that expired to today as uh, we're recording to, this, expires right? to get in on it today yeah, yeah. so you can redeem your free month and your two free games yeah, you, can, you still get as long as you signed up you, as long as you yeah. sign up you get you get a month for uh month free of playstation plus so in the uncharted 3 beta so far it's multiplayer uh deathmatch that i've been doing on it and i haven't gotten too deep into it but it's fun i mean it's interesting to do death match though where it's a third person shooter perspective more like an action adventure title rather than a first person shooter perspective but based on everyone that i've been playing with and talking to if you like the multiplayer in uncharted 2 it's uh, an evolutionary step forward and so not revolutionary not revolutionary on this on this list here it says you've also been doing a lot of prawn pr zero in no i think he just said pronoun goes here oh pro prown prown the free to play game prawns prown for those of you that don't remember when did we last talk about it a week ago last week yeah it's a new free to play game for pc pay what you want you should at least give them a dollar or two because, you know, that's on just principle. That, that's classy. On principle? Don't be that on, guy. <laughs> on principle. But you can download it for free. It is a racing game that has very interesting shape based art. It's very colorful. Uh, Alex, do you have uh, some video of that? This would be a great time to play it if you have any. Yeah, just on the off chance you had any. It comes with a couple levels. Users can make their own levels, and it's, it's worth checking out. I mean, for a game that is free, Go. essentially, what's cool about it is. You essentially hit a button to go forward, and then you turn, and that's it. That's the control. Sounds like Mario Kart. A little different. Mario Kart has uh, better power. How are you controlling the tilt? Uh, back and forth. I am smelling. So you're steering. I am smelling an iPhone hit here. Surprisingly, not yeah, not so, on portable, uh, not on iOS or Android. Yeah, yet. give it a time. It's See, definitely going to happen. Kind of reminds me of Skyroads. Four players. Yeah, I can split see well, as we discussed last week, it also looks to me like uh, audio surf. I got to imagine coming up at some point will be dynamic procedural computer generated levels on what the What makes this fun versus the hundred of other games that have been similar to this in the past? This one's pretty. I like the artwork. I have to admit, the visually, I find it very striking. And I like that it's, it's so simple. It's got such a simple approach to just turning and going forward. It's very basic. And I think that works to its strength. I think other games that have tried to do something similar to this end up mucking it up with mm-hmm. a bunch of additional power-ups, a bunch of things that make it complex. Or, quite frankly, they don't have art that looks as good. And the, and you can mod it yourself, right? Yes, Is you there can a make Minecraft your own levels. appeal to well, you, this Yeah, as well? you can make your own tracks. Yeah. But I think what's really getting a lot of attention is that it seems like a very solid commercial title that they're offering for pay what you want. Yeah. And I think that's the appeal. So I recommend it. I mean, hey. How can you not recommend a game that you can essentially get for free? Prown, available now for $7,000 or free. If depends, you think it's depends, worth it. You know, it depends to you. on how much you want. So I've been playing that. I played a little of uh, Sodium on PlayStation Home, just because my brother my brother works for Sony uh, in the home department. He's always trying to convince me, dude, home. Home's where it's at, man. You got to check out home. What is Sodium? Sodium, it's a battle racing game Okay. in home. So that was kind of cool. Yeah. Played that for a little bit. Really, I've just been poking around and checking out, you know, as much as I can this week. I'm replacing the power supply on my main gaming PC because uh, my uh, Radeon 4800 graphics card likes to just shut off intermittently. Right. So I think it's the power supply. Now, we didn't mention, but TF2 went free to play. Yeah, we talked about that uh, last week. Did we talk week. about that on last week's show? But did you take advantage of that? I did not take advantage of it this week. Okay. But I intend to. What about you, Alex? Um, you, you're a big Windows Phone gamer. Y- well, no, but uh, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of new to the game. So well, you, you, know, you play I'm, you've played a game on Windows Phone. I, I have now. You're a big Windows Phone. There gamer. you go. Okay, yes. you're the big Windows Phone player. You're the person who's done the that. Windows Phone gamer. Yes, I kid. I kid because I love Windows Phone. So I know I'm I'm way behind on on this because you know I'm new to this world. But you know you know Angry Birds just came out, so I've been kind of you know wasting my time on that instead Never of you know, heard doing of the show. So um, yeah. 
Can I can I say something? That's like I, I went and uh, you know uh, around graduation time, I do a bunch of these all night graduation parties, mm-hmm. uh, performing my magic show at it, and uh, I was shocked. I would say ten percent of the entire graduating class had novelty. Angry Birds T-shirts no or merchandise, like really? either the Angry Eyes of the Bird or you know some kind of catchphrase. Angry or some kind of... Eyes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wow. That is so weird. Violation. That you just did that. Felon. Felon. No, that I is... had to red card myself. No, but that's so weird. My wife did that same parody of that song when it came up on Pandora. Really? And it's just so strange. <laughs> this is a weird sort of the For great some, magnet at work. Some pathway in my brain. That's you guys both think the same way about Eric Carmen, apparently. <laughs> we do. I've always said so. Uh, well, let's move on. Well, Tony Wang, our producer, says that he's playing Zelda Ocarina of Time cash on delivery. Oh, no, I mean, he's also playing Call of Duty. <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> on to Retro. It's all retro. Yeah, so we were going to talk about Bomberman this week, but Alex, our very own... Uh, Man, by, at the controls of at the controls, Again, brought in. Yes. Uh, which I'm squared. just gonna I'm just gonna work that into the ground. He's Alex the controls. Yes, he brought in a Nintendo <laughs> Virtual Boy, uh, which amazing. I have one of these, and Forget I didn't want to dig it out of Bummer, my man. That's a freaking real Virtual Boy. Amazing. That's virtually the best thing I've ever seen. Now, I had never played one of these. This is until Nintendo's. Today. Now it does cause permanent damage to your brain. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is Nintendo's biggest bomb ever. Speaking of bomber, speaking man. of bombs, <laughs> the Virtual Boy was released in the summer of 1995, so it predates the Nintendo 64. The way it works is it's kind of virtual reality esque if your idea of virtual reality is one color. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Those single color graphics. As you rotate rapidly, falling blocks. It looks like I'm in the game. Line up three of the same blocks and they disappear. But watch for other explosive elements that may blast onto your screen. A 3D game for a. 3D world. So the 3D was not really taken well advantage of. Good, good advantage. No, of. and and it uh, it will hurt your eyes if you play it for any considerable length of time. It's working or not? I'm trying to hold it. It up doesn't here. doesn't seem to be working. You we can't see, see anything. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to show it. But uh, that's it's a lot bigger than I remembered it being. Look in there. Or maybe I was smaller. And back what's when weird it came about out. it too is in 1995, virtual reality wasn't really the craze anymore. Oh my gosh, this, are you kidding? I mean, that was still. They is, still hadn't even come out with. I like mean, you got to remember, it's all vector graphics too. Yeah. Uh, so if you ever used like they're, they're one of those old vector graphic. Vector graphic uh, um, well, that yeah, that particular title you're looking that at. That game had, is vector, had, but the others yeah. are, are. Well, like, that's true. They're they, not they, all. They got a warrior world. But the one I'm looking at right now reminds me of using the Plato system at the University of Illinois. That the game that you're playing right now is Red Alarm. For anyone who remembers that, I'm going to play it. So, you might ask this system that displayed monochrome graphics that came out in the 1990s how much would you pay for such a system how much would you pay for this system dude i'll tell you what i'd give a i'll give you 50 bucks for it right now yeah guess how much it cost when it was brand new 299 dollars 179 bucks it might as well have been 299 but it's that like, was, it's 3D and everything, though. That was a lot of money back in those I days. I feel like I'm at the opera, by the way. This, is, came this out, is future opera right here. In the here, summer of you know? 1995, discontinued the following year. I can get it right now. Uh, but, you know, Buy it now price on eBay with four games. So a bundle for 119.99. Wow. It actually hasn't gone up in price. Uh, there's actually one console system for 70 bucks on eBay, too. That's just without any of the uh, games. So you've might, used your I, version. I now, I have one of these still, but mine is in the garage with also some of my select favorites from the 3DO and Sega CD system. Oh, I have basically a, a box of failure, a box of video game industry failures that I keep for nostalgic purposes, stuff that I wanted to hold on to. I haven't really played my Virtual Boy in 15 years. I haven't played mine in eight years, maybe. This is in, in the garage for since then. How long has it been, Brian, since you played his Virtual Boy? Oh, like f- 10 seconds now, I think. <laughs> Now, did you did you love this when it came out? No, God, no. Really? It, it was it was one of those question marks that, that really puzzled a lot of people. At the E3 when Nintendo showed this off, they had like a dome and you had to wait in line to try it. And it was like, oh God, Nintendo. And remember, the year that this was launched, this was around the time of the Dreamcast, the original PlayStation, and Nintendo had the Nintendo 64 yeah. waiting the, in the wings. This w- would have been hot in 1991. Do you think? Yeah. I, would, oh, I would say at, at, yeah. at, the, at the latest. Not, yeah, keep in yeah, ni- 91 would have been during the heyday of the Genesis and TurboGrafx-16. I could see that around there. But yeah, why, but, though? But I mean, once, the graphics, think well, how we were because it Because it was 3D. Kind of. But once once you actually got Dreamcast-level graphics at the end of the 90s, yeah. all of that stuff, this just 
you can't it doesn't, can't compare monochrome. You cannot live with monochrome. Look, uh, 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 okay, here's here's the thing. Don't don't fault the fact that it's monochrome because whether or not this one worked out, this is the type of thinking that has made Nintendo top of the game now because it's the same type of thinking mm. that gave us this disaster. Is the same type of thinking that gave us the Wii, which everyone thought would be a disaster and ended up being super novel. And it's also the same type of thinking now giving us the Wii U. Yeah, and if you're if you're out there saying the Wii was a disaster, it was a very profitable disaster. Right. For <laughs> Certainly not a financial disaster yeah. for anyone. But even Sega VR. I mean, Sega VR, I thought, if I were just predicting which would be a greater success, that was going to add on to the incredibly popular Genesis. Now, I've played the Sega VR behind closed doors. That sucked. And as someone we met that worked at Sega during the time, who now that's works right, at Sony, that's right. he, he said, yeah, that was complete vapor. Like, All right, we got it. We got to get in. You promised them Bomberman reminiscing, so we got to get that in before we move on. Should we or should we save that for another week? You want to save it? Let's, let's save Bomberman. I feel like think, Bomberman. I mean, I don't know. Actually, we're just What's teasing left to the say? I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I say we have it out right now. I, I know you Bomber love your Bomberman. Awesome. Bomberman's awesome. What more am I going to say than yeah. that? Bomberman, I mean, I mean, we could tell the There you sto- go. You know? <laughs> but That's you all know what? Here's what I'll say about Bomberman. Bomberman is the greatest video game franchise that has that's never been recognized mm. as such. If I had to pick it's one, the most undervalued. underrated Definitely. franchise. Yeah. All right. On to our next advertisement about Sponsor. Oh, Sponsor. Who gives us the If you haven't tried Sponsor, what are you waiting for? Sign Listen. up for a free 30-day trial now. For heaven's sake. <laughs> if you haven't tried Sponsor, why don't you just kill yourself right now? Because or if anyone tries to, to get in your way while you're trying to use Sponsor, kill them. <laughs> Good thing this is not a real sponsor. Use the offer code sponsor. <laughs> Time for Random Awesome of the Week. That we have an intro for. Yay! Do. And I'm not ready for Play no, that's all right. the Random and Awesome we, of the Week And we thing. already did calendar. So. But you got... Oh, anyway. when did you do calendar? Now we were talking it's about time games coming for out. Random Awesome. Should that be moving? Everybody's a winner. There we Scott go. Fletcher? I don't know who it is, man. I have a we production. Think it is. Every time that it came totally up, sounds like yeah. Scott Fletcher. I have a production yeah. library of just a bunch of stuff. I think stuff. it probably was, actually. That's hilarious. All right. Uh, so, Random Awesome of the Week, Left for Dead Portal mashup. Yeah, what's the story behind this? I know I'd seen it in the week, and then you saw it and reminded me about it today, Brian. Yeah, this is, uh, first of all, uh, it sounds a little bit fake. Uh, and, and when We're not going to play it, the audio because of the profanity. Oh, okay. Well, we, I mean, you can play the very beginning, I think. Um, well, but, I think we're going to jump ahead. All right, all right. <laughs> well, uh, basically, this is, this is a... Uh, there was a user mod for Left 4 Dead 2. So you got to wrap your mind around the fact that you're playing Left 4 Dead 2. And built into this user level of Left 4 Dead 2, by some weapons, you see this little tiny light up in the corner. And when you hover over it, you start to hear the sounds of first the uh, the turrets saying hello and all that stuff. And then you hear Gladys hello. start talking at you. And then all of a sudden, a door freaking opens up. Are now keep in mind, this is in a regular Left 4, 2, Left 4 Dead 2 level. A fan-made fan- mod. Yeah, but... But of course, I mean, but there's lots of fan made mods and they down. all stick within the, uh, you know, the, they're made to be good Left 4 Dead 2 levels. Oh, but this one there. opens up and it just, <laughs> it has this awesome procedural, uh, everything gets more and more insane. So a portal opens up, you walk in, and all of a sudden you're in the portal world. And, but uh, you still have all of the gear from Left 4 Dead. You have your guns from Left 4 Dead, right? And then you keep on walking and they used a bunch of assets from Portal 2 and Targeting. she. And she starts. She starts to say that there's a that she needs to do some testing. And there's even a moment when you look through the warped glass and you briefly see the G-Man from Half Life and Half Life Two in there. But then uh, it's it's really neat. Now here are the only things though. First of all, do keep in mind that you know obviously this is not a Valve thing, and while the people who posted this video swear that they didn't fake anything, it sounds awfully. W- it Convenient. Like, well, it sounds like somebody's poorly acting it to me. But you can see, like, you know, as you go in, there's a there's That's a cool, yeah. sign that says zombie urban testing facility, and then you keep on going, and they've got the pipes with the crazy gels in there. That's fantastic. I love it. No, I think Random it's really awesome cool. of the week. And if you want more info on it, if you want to check out the video in its entirety with links to where you can download the levels, uh, hit me up on Twitter, at Glenn Rubenstein. I just tweeted out a link to the video. Time for the calendar, except we already did the calendar, apparently. Totally did the calendar. So uh, is that something we should do normally? Well, we were talking earlier. I had it in there later in the schedule. You were talking about moving it to the big game of the week. Yeah. So I think we should move it yeah. in the future. All right. To so how we did today. So... Flashback in time, folks. Remember? Remember, how, remember we did that calendar and it was awesome? So right after Big Games of the Week, we'll do the calendar, or right yeah. before Big Games of the Week? 
I should change it on the template is what you I You should change it on the template. Oh, it is changed on the template. Is it? Yeah. All right. Well, How there long we go. did we go? Are there we, we go. already out of material? Uh, okay. This is like the most close to yeah. on time episode we've now ever done. Now it's time for feedback oh with Glenn, Brian, Tom on that the controls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> cool. <on. laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, we don't have any uh, emails in the lineup, but do you no, have some? No, or should really. we just take some feedback from the yeah, chat? Let's let's yeah, let's talk the to the chat. Now we talk to the chat <laughs> room with Glenn, Brian, and Tom on at the controls. Oh, now yeah. it's a little brainstorming. We can talk about format wise. We did get an email today uh, from Jonathan Grenier who said he actually is. It feels like this episode's a little more TNT with the video game filter. Because of the spe- speediness of the news, mm-hmm. and I'm curious how people feel about the format. If you if if you're a longtime listener of the At the Controls betas, which hey, how can you not be? We've done what nine of them now. Well, yeah. You'll notice that this is perhaps the most tightest formatted uh, version of the show that we've done thus far. Our goal is to get at the controls in an hour and move to the LAN party awesomeness. Yes. We yes. don't want to still be sitting around with people like, I'm but, waiting for the LAN party to start. But here's the problem, though, is the our greatest strength in at the controls, you can get the news anywhere, uh, mm. but our greatest strength is is our debates. And, and, and that's why what we attempted to do with this lineup was run through the news so you get an idea of what's going on, do it really fast right off the top, and right. then get into control issues where we have those big debates and then uh, and big games and what we're playing. So control issues and what we're playing are sort of the the tent poles, if you will, where we can have our good conversations. And then we have calendar and and big games of the week and and the news to to kind of make sure you get all the information you need so you don't uh, walk away. People feeling in the like chat room really seem to appreciate the Glender Active segments in the show. <laughs> good. So this good. meme will never die. Well, I think this week. Part of where we're coming from is that there's no real big game this week. There's no big release to discuss. That is one. That's that's one thing that would inflate big games of the week. Uh, but we're still trying to. Uh, yeah, I said tent poles, tensor guy. Get over it. Uh, <laughs> What's wrong with that? Tent pole. You know, people use it for Polish mean, people. Dirty things. I don't understand. Like, like Pol- things Pol- that are homeless washed. Polish people. Why yeah. Well, if you have a tent you? pole, it's out in the dirt. You know, and it's, you're camping. It's just dirty. Yeah, you get so dirty it's dirty when you're in a tent. Exactly. Underneath the tent pole. Huh? Otherwise, you should live in a house. Uh, but yes, big games of the week will be a, a longer segment, which which actually means we. How, how long were we if we consider ourselves stopping? I don't like, think we're about maybe now. like forty five minutes, uh, maybe. fifty minutes. Yeah, 50 yeah. Minutes. we're at fifty okay. minutes now. If you've so been good. listening, all right, this is the shortest episode I think we have ever done. Yeah, big games of the week would fill that out to an hour, so that's perfect. All and right. what I would do normally, I, I moved us along. Without even looking at the clock, just like let's move, let's move, let's move. Like stop Um, talking. And I, I I would be more clock watching and realizing that we are like, oh, we're running a little under. Let's 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 ask another. No, go ahead and discourse on Bomberman or (laughs) yeah, or Brian. I think you're absolutely wrong. Uh, You know, I actually don't mind the idea of of burning through the big news. Although I think there should be a place to recap because as that stream of information flows past, I think. After we get it all out, so at the very least, you turn it on and you get ten minutes of the biggest news in all of gaming right that right up front, and then uh, and then as we transition, you know, people can go back and say like, I really wanted to talk about this, and then so that's becomes, what control issues. Yeah, is for. yeah, yeah. So yeah. so, but as long as it's okay to have backseas. And what I what, what I, yeah, about. what I was what I was saying with World of Warcraft was like, let's not extend the news by discussing the Blizzard thing. Let's move on to control issues and make that one of the topics. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and so I, there's nothing wrong with saying like, okay, we told you the facts earlier in our in our news segment, but you know, let's there is some some more to talk about here. So or we just do it McLaughlin Group style and be like, you know, well, the Warcraft goes free to play. Wrong. Brian, wrong. What does this mean for the longevity of the game? <laughs> wrong answer. Yeah. Glenn. But I think the key is we're trying to figure out which format works best in terms of the balance. I agree. It felt like we were very fast and tight today. And part of that, I think, has to do with the fact that, obviously, like we said, not a lot of big games. And then also figuring out which news stories we want to talk about more in depth. Right. Well, to elaborate on. Remember, fast and tight was what we were going for. Oh, totally. So we shouldn't be apologizing for that. Yeah. Unless Sorry, people, we unless so fast I would like so to take tight. a moment to apologize to the people out there <laughs> that like when Brian and I do an hour 45 just on Well, uh, and that's, I guess and that's where I'm going with. Is, is the audience we did we did fast and tight today is is that to Jim the fly I like fast and tight were there other people like no I don't I want the hour and 45 you know more discussion oriented 
Well, and I think we can do both. And See, I Chimera think, is like I, 30 minutes is good. I think it's I think it's important to have the the news be be fast and tight right up front and then if we are if we're hitting it i don't care if we go an hour and 15 hour and 20 minutes as long as it's good in-depth discussion that we're having glenn and tight <laughs> news and glenalysis <laughs> and also remember those of you who are saying longer remember this live anyway would be the first hour in what would probably end up being a four or five hour with the lamb party, and thing. yeah, but but here's what I worry about. I and and I don't. I understand that the podcast of the lamb party will be condensed down to thirty minutes. It'll be all the highlights. But the lamb party is going to be four hours of, ha ha. That was a good one. Well, oh, I, got you. I think you can do some 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 interviewing and analysis along the way. Yeah, but it, I, I I don't. Uh, every, every whatever you do, it's going to have a distraction because it'll be operating at two levels, and I feel like we have an operation, uh, we have an opportunity to to go into in depth. Like all the all the positive feedback we've gotten has been, as far as I mean, I don't know. It's not really it's not really for me to decide. Jim Bednar says if the show goes too long, he starts to develop a Glenzheim deficiency. <laughs> <laughs> well, and some weeks we also have guests. This is kind of a little more lean in terms of well, but it can't be too if we want to keep That's it at an hour. It, this isn't lean. This is, this is just right. About yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, that's true. So if we're going to add an interview, you have it as interview slash control issues. Yeah, we we might have to compress that's something true. else. And so. because people asking, even this somewhat criticizing email, uh, someone suggested uh, Jeff Kanata and Jeff Gersman for guests. Jeff Kanata will be a guest once we launch. And Jeff Gersman hung out with him last weekend. He's confirmed he's going to be one of our first official guests Excellent. once we're in official release. And I'm sure he will come back often, uh, given that I see the guy a whole hell of a lot. So that's the thing. We're evolving, but I agree that, that this is about the right time frame. I think we just need to get a little more comfortable with it. And, right. And uh, figuring out, and as someone in the ch- chat room pointed out, always leave them wanting more. That's show business for you. <laughs> right there. <laughs> but for the most part, this is why we also have feedback. So if you feel there's a game that we should be covering, if you feel like there's anything we're missing out on, get at us, uh, twitgameshow at gmail.com. You can send me a tweet. I'm at Glenn Rubenstein. Oh, uh, put it up here in the chat room or if you just want to participate and converse with me during the week about your show suggestions that is the place to hit me up uh you know what i think we're about to get a final call as far as how we're doing on time can we get an official <laughs> an official i'm sorry oh no it looks like it looks like we're out is that is that are you calling it we're out. <laughs> that was your clue yeah, that was your cue glenn we have we have our outro music there it is so, until next time, and someone in the comments had said that this outro is cheesy, so I want you all to hit the last part with me. Until next time, on behalf of Alex Gumpel, Brian Brushwood, Tom Merritt, and myself, I'm Glenn Rubenstein, reminding you that time enjoyed <laughs> is never time wasted, especially when you're at, at the, the controls. controls. See you next week. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.